welcome to session 9 of data communication. Today we'll be looking at circuit switching. Now, long distance transmission is typically done over a network of switch nodes. So nodes are not concerned with the content of the data, but they are concerned with the device that does the switching. Now, we, will, we are going to talk about end devices. These are also known as stations. Examples can be your computer, your terminal, your telephone, your fridge, anything that can get access to the net or anything that can be connected becomes an end device. Now, switching devices whose purpose is to provide communication are also known as nodes. So we'll be, we'll be using this a lot. We'll be switching between end devices and nodes. A collection of the nodes and the connection is known as the communication network. So data is routed by being switched from one node to one node or from one end device to another end device. Now nodes may connect to other nodes only or to stations and other nodes. So I can have a node connecting to another node or a node connecting to a station. We'll take a look at that. Now nodes to node links usually are multiplexed. You remember we spoke about multiplexing where we are able to take frames from different groups, put them together and pass them through the channel. Now network is usually partially connected. Some redundant connections are desirable for reliability. Now there are two basic switching technologies that we are going to look at. The first is the circuit switching and the second is the packet switching. Now, for circuit switching, there's a dedicated communication path between two stations. So we have station one and station two, and we have a clear line of sight or a clear direction or a clear communication or cable going to from station one to station B. It means that any time one needs to send data to those stations, one needs to use that dedicated link. Now, connections are usually in three phases. First, the, the two stations need to establish what is called the end-to-end -end connection or the circuit establishment. So once that is done, and don't forget, to be able to know that you have established a connection, the station needs to respond with an acknowledgement, which we, we've already dealt with using the ARC. They can, it can be at various levels, ARC 0, ARC 1. Once the first establishment is done, the next is to do the data transfer. And here we have looked at various types of data transfer, talking about the analog uh, data using analog signal or analog data using digital signal and its varieties. Now, we, for circuit switching, we must have a switching, or for circuit switching, we need a switching cap uh, capacity and a channel capacity to establish this connection. Remember, we spoke about channel capacity and we even spoke about uh, channel capacity where we need the bandwidth to be able to transmit data between stations. And this switching capacity or channel capacity should have or should be intelligent enough to work out the routes. Okay, so how packets are going to be moving from one network to the other or from one, net, uh, one node to the other. The switching capacity or the switching device needs to be that intelligent enough to do that. Because if a packet is going to, say, US, the switching device should be able to know that it has to move through a number of hops, a number of stations before getting that, or before getting there, using, making use of the addresses, the IP addresses, the MAC address, and all that. Now, one shortfall of the circuit switching is that it's inefficient. Why? Because channel capacity dedicated for duration of connection is less. Now, if no data, then that capacity is even wasted. Remember, capacity is bandwidth. Now, the setup or the connection takes a lot of time to be able to set up a, a circuit switching or put up a, set, a, a switching device. Now, once connected, the transfer is transparent. Anyone at all can know exactly what is going on. Any expert or hacker can easily eavesdrop into an, any connection 
and can know exactly where packets are going and where packets are moving from. Now, in terms of performance, there is a delay prior to signal transfer for call establishment. Remember, we said that it has to first make the initial connection, the circuit establishment, end-to-end -end co connection. That causes some bit of delay. And also, it was developed for voice traffic, talking about our phones. Now, public telephone network, private branch exchange, and private network are some examples of circuit switching. Now, let's look at the circuit switching concept. We have what is called a digital switch. Now, this provides transparent signal path between devices. So to solve the bit of challenges with circuit switching, we have provided a device known as the digital switch. Now this does the, provide a transparent signal between devices. It has a network interface and it has a control unit. This control unit is resp responsible for first establishing the connection, and this is generally on demand, it handles and acknowledge requests that comes in. It determines if the destination is free and also it constructs some logical path or some shortest uh, path where the data is supposed to move uh, on. Now, after that, it maintains the connection and this it uses the time division principle, which we've already looked at. Then we disconnect. Once the, uh, the data has been sent, we now disconnect the transmission. So the control unit is basically the engine room of the switching device. It does establishment of connection, it maintains the connection, then after the transaction, it disconnects. Now I want to look at blocking and non-blocking. Now with regards to circuit switching, we can say that a blocking network is a network that is unable to connect stations because all the parts are being used. So that's one shortfall of switching nodes or switching network because all the path where the data is being communicated are engaged. So this is what a blocking network allows. It's used mostly on voice systems, normally for short durations. And once that is done, it, dis it disconnects. Non-blocking, on the, on the other hand, permits all stations to connect in pairs at once, and it's used for some data communications. We want to look at space division switching. This was developed for analog environments, and signal path have separate physical path. Now, crossbars are used in this scenario. Now, when we talk about crossbar, it's like having rows and columns intersecting at a point. So we have rows, we have columns. You can look at it as an SL sheet where we have various cells. But this time we are looking at the various points. We'll demonstrate this in our slide later on. Now, what this crossbar does is that it has some limitation, or it has a number of limitations. First of the number of cross points grow as the square of number of stations. So the more stations you have, the more cross points you are likely to get. And the loss of cross points prevents connection. Because they are kind of like connected in rows and columns, once one point is damaged, it means that dedicated path is no more going to be there. Now it's inefficient use of cross points. We have some dedicated points, but not all the paths are being used. So you can imagine we are wasting bandwidth because once the data is sent, the part, all the parts are supposed to be engaged, but that's not the case. This follows the principle of non-blocking. It moves in pairs, you remember. Then we have the multi-stage switch. This is an upgrade of the space division switching. So this has a reduced number of cross points and more than one path through the network. This increases reliability. So once there's a failure in one link, it's able to divert to another link. And it reduces a more 
or it, it requires a more complex control uh, scheme. And this multi-state switch uses the principle of blocking. Then we want to look at the time division switching. Modern digital systems rely on intelligent control of speeds and time division elements. Uh, they use digital time division techniques to set up and maintain virtual circuits. And this involves the partitioning of low speed bit stream into pieces that share higher uh, speed stream. The general purpose computer running software or runs a computer software to make it a smarter phone or a smartphone switch. And the cost is significantly less than the traditional switch circuits. What are the advantages? It has great functionalities. We, we deal with packetization of digital voice data, and this allows voice over IPs. We see this in our offices these days, where we have a telephone being connected onto the network, and we can make calls through that. Various applications are being developed using this technology, the voice over IP. So we want to look at soft switch architecture. Now, most complex part of our telephone network switch is being handled by softwares. And these softwares are controlling the core process, especially in our call, calling or network or the telcos. These are separated into the core routing, the core processing logic, and these are typically run on proprietary processes. This is the, the norm. A more flexible, flexible way to do this is to separate the core processing from the hardware function of the switch. How? The physical switching is being done by the media gateway, and the core processing is being done by the media gateway controller. So this is the traditional switching circuit architecture. We have the core processing, then we have the circuit uh, switching fabric. These are the telephone or your telephone devices. This is the switch or circuit switch trunks. Now, request is being generated or the request to generate the progress tone will ring back or engaged or uh, somebody's on the line are all made from here, from the core processing to the circuit switching fabric. Then the supervisory events, the off hook, on hook, are being done from the circuit switching to the core processing. So this has been the way our core processing have been handled. Now I want to look at the proposed new soft switch architecture. We have the media gateway controller doing the work of the core processing. Then we have the media gateway doing the work of the circuit switch fabric. Of course, we still have our supervisory events and the request to generate progress here. Then we have the packet switched trunks. Then we have the packet switch access. So the telephone lines now go through the circuit or packet switch access, then to the media gateway. And the data is being transmitted between the media gateway and the media gateway controller. Previously, the telephone lines went straight to the circuit switching fabric. But this architecture has been changed. And that will bring us to the end of this session. I will see us in the next session.